All right, let's start with the updates coming in from the Pakistani elections where the United States has now expressed concerns over alleged rigging in the 25th of July elections that were held in Pakistan. In a response to Vion over free and fair elections in Pakistan, a U.S. State Department official has said, and I quote, we are concerned by reports of constraints that were placed on freedoms of expression, association and also the press leading up to the elections, unquote. But the U.S. government has also said that it is in fact waiting for official results from Pakistan's election commission and observer missions to release their preliminary findings. Now, some political parties in Pakistan have in fact accused the election commission of rigging the polls. Pakistan's poll panel has however rejected the claims resoundingly and has said that these are completely baseless. All right, now for more on this, we are joined in by our correspondent Siddhan Sibyl, who is joining us live. Uh, good afternoon to you, Siddhan. What is the latest on the story? Well, the State Department has reacted uh, for the first time uh, to any Indian news channel on the Pakistani elections. Uh, they spoke on first on Imran Khan, saying that they are willing to work with the new government for stability and security in South Asia. That's a big statement, given the fact that Imran Khan, in his first uh, informal address to the nation, it can be said, has uh, talked about relations with the United States, saying that he would like to have an equal relations with America, mm -hmm. given the fact that relations uh, with America America and Pakistan, both of them aren't having very good ties. Remember that one of the first tweets of uh, the, uh, the US President Donald Trump this year in 2018 was of lies and deceit which Pakistan has given. The second point uh, the State Department has said is on constraints put on the press ahead of the elections leading up to elections. I can count three cases. One is of course the Dawn case. The circulation of one of the most widely read newspaper in the country was uh, put on hold, in, especially now Army cantonment. Second of Gul Bukhari, one of, of the Pak, fa one of famous Pakistani journalists who was abducted briefly and then of course uh, she was uh, uh, freed. And uh, then uh, Geo Television that was uh, put out on a uh, blackout in certain sections of the country. Certain ca the cable television channels were asked not to carry Geo TV. So there were constraints uh, on uh, the Pakistani media ahead of the elections. Even here in India, we faced the problem. None mm -hmm. of the Indian journalists were given any visa to cover the Pakistani election for the first time that of course uh, uh, was unprecedented and we were just told that uh, there was no uh, approval from Islamabad even the right. uh, people here the foreign correspondents club had also condemned it and said that this is not justified so that's a big uh, breaking story that the State Department has spoken to Vian and spoken on two issues on Imran Khan and of course on the constraints put on the press especially the Pakistani press absolutely indeed Sidan. now considering as to what is been playing out in Pakistan. Well, Nawaz Sharif and also the opposition, which is now going to sit in opposition, has been stating for a fair bit of period now that these elections are going to be rigged. But Imran Khan has maintained that these elections have been held in as free and fair a manner as possible. Now, the United States, one of the officials who has now responded, has said, yes, there are concerns, but is there any follow-up that we can expect which the United States would, in fact, continue to do to try and, uh, and address this rigging that they say has taken place in the elections in Pakistan. Well, there were observers there uh, from Commonwealth who covered uh, the elections uh, and they will be coming out with a, a report. But as far as United States is concerned, they can only uh, say about uh, an internal affairs of uh, a country. They, yes, there are parties there. The the uh, the party of Nawaz Sharif, the PPP have been saying that. Mm -hmm. But Imran Khan yesterday when he was speaking to uh, the nation, that informal address, that famous informal address, uh, towards the end, he, he right. spoke about this issue. He said that, uh, uh, well, this election commission, this Pakistan election commission, the members were chosen by PPP and Nawaz Sharif's party. So what's the fuss about? Yes, all the parties, barring Imran Khan's party, have been saying that these are rigged elections. There have been reports coming from the mm -hmm. Pakistani media itself that these are a rigged election. But it will take a time, it right. will take some time to confirm that they were rigged or not. But as of now, at least from the Pakistani side, it has been said that uh, there will be no, no re-polling or right. re-look into the entire election process that took place, which has, of course, raised eyebrows in the country itself right and also Zidane, just just for a quick clarification on this uh, is it rigging per se that we're talking about here or is it that there were constraints that were put on the media in terms of how it was in fact covering the elections that the United States has expressed concerns about 
Well, the United States, speaking to Vion, expressed concerns about the press. It said that there were free, uh, there were constraints on the freedom of expression and on the press. These are the words uh, which the State Department told Vion right. uh, leading up to election. So that is basically focusing on the the press freedom. And as I've told you, the Dawn, one of the leading newspaper, Geo Television, which is one of the most watched television uh, in the country, and uh, uh, abduction of journalists was an issue, and it was even uh, talked about by the political. Uh, uh, circles, the, the people in power also talked about it. Uh, the pa uh, party of Nawaz Sharif talked about it. Uh, uh, and that was a concern which was raised not All only right. uh, by the US but also reporters without border right. which wrote a letter to the uh, to the, the prime minister there, the, the interim prime minister who was uh, uh, taking uh, making sure that the election is free and fair. All right, we'll have to leave it there. Thank you very much indeed, Sidhan Sibyl, for joining us and getting us the latest in terms of how the United States has in fact expressed concerns about the, uh, about the manner in which Pakistani media was in fact not allowed to cover the elections in the manner that they were hoping to. However, the Pakistani Election Commission for its part though has provisionally declared the results of as many as 251 of the 270 National Assembly seats. Now, cricketer-turned-politician Imran Khan's tehreek insaf party has won 110 seats till the last results came in. And also, the results for 19 seats are yet to be declared. The magic figure to form the government is 137, but keeping in view the trends that, that have arrived so far, it's fairly clear that Imran Khan will have to seek allies to form the next government. The Nawaz Sharif's PMLN is trailing with 63 seats, while late Benazir Bhutto's Pakistan People's Party is at third position with 42 seats. Shahbaz Sharif, who heads the PMLN after the imprisonment of his brother Nawaz Sharif, has rejected the results, alleging widespread fraud and manipulation. And also earlier, the poll panel has blamed technical difficulties for the slow vote count. In spite of the delay, Imran Khan of the Pakistan tehreek e insaf has claimed a victory and has vowed to bring an era of good governance in his country. Now, Imran Khan has also promised a number of reforms for the welfare of the people. And on Thursday, Imran Khan has addressed the nation where he made some reconciliatory remarks about India, saying that he's actually quite willing to talk peace with the Indian leadership if it were to be reciprocated. All right, now for more on this, we are joined in by our Islamabad Bureau Chief Anas Malik, who's joining us live. Well, Anas, the results pretty much indicate that it is Imran Khan who will be forming the next government, but he may actually fall short of the majority. So do we have any information at all at this point of time as to which are the allies that he's seeking out at this point of time? Absolutely, Saleh. As we speak, initially the results for about uh, 219 seats were out. Right now, uh, as we speak, uh, 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 sorry, 251 seats were out. As we speak, uh, uh, the results of 259 seats have been around. That makes just 11 seats, uh, 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 11 of the seats that uh, on, on which uh, results are currently awaited out of the 270 seats where uh, results were poured, uh, mm -hmm. uh, where votes were poured. Uh, now, the Pakistan Tehreek e Insaf, uh, the PTI of Imran Khan, is currently in lead by 100. And 14 seats, uh, whereas Pakistan Muslim League Nawaz, Pakistan Muslim League N of Nawaz Sharif uh, is in is in the second place with 62 seats. The Pakistan People's Party by 43 seats. The MMA, the right wing alliance, Mutaida Majlis Amal, Majlis Amal by 11. And whereas about uh, five independent candidates have also won. Now Imran Khan would clearly not be having majority enough enough seats to form a government on his own. So he would be needing simple. Uh, he would be needing help of some of his like-minded parties. In these regards, Shah Mahmood Qureshi, one of the key leaders of, uh, PM, uh, of Pakistan Tariq and Saab, have been tasked with uh, to, uh, to actually go on and contact uh, like-minded parties. Mm -hmm. They've been in contact with the uh, Grand Democratic Alliance of Sindh that was against the Pakistan People's Party. They're also in contact with Pakistan Muslim League, uh, Qaeda Azam, the PMLQ, that is from Punjab. Uh, so if by and large, if they manage to get their support and uh, uh, 
uh, and the support of those five in, uh, independent candidates and managed to make the number 237, 137, then at, uh, for sure they will be forming the government with simple majority. Yes, Saleh? Absolutely indeed, Anas. And also one of the other things that will be looked at in terms of how the results have panned out is the manner in which Pakistan has resoundingly rejected the fringe elements the terror elements who have been taking part in this election. Now, Hafiz Aid's party has not been able to win even a single seat in Pakistan. How significant is that? Absolutely, it is very significant, primarily because it was mainstreaming of these terror elements from uh, the deep state and from the Pakistanis powerful, from the Pakistan's powerful uh, military establishment. It was an attempt to uh, mainstream these terrorists by getting to the, them to the National Assembly so that they could have a voice at, an, at a national uh, frame, at a national structure, at a national uh, place. Uh, but uh, n the fact that the Pakistani, uh, uh, pe the people of Pakistan by and large have rejected uh, such voices of extremism, it is very significant. Also, what is to be noted is that, the, that these uh, non-state actors uh, 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 basically expose the duplicity of the Pakistani establishment, primarily because on one end, the Pakistani establishment says that they these people like Hafiz Saeed, Masood Azhar, Lakhvi are non-state actors and they're, uh, they're an asset to Pakistan, they're, they're not, uh, uh, they're a cancer to Pakistan, they're more of an acid to mm -hmm. the Pakistani structure. On the other hand, they go on to support and uh, get their papers cleared and they don't take any action. So it is very significant. The people of Pakistan have spoken and no, uh, no thing is better when the, people, uh, when the people speak up. No establishment, no agency can stand up to when the people speak up and that is exactly Exactly what we saw, where the people Absolutely. voted them out, uh, voted them out, um, the, the extremist elements, be that be Ahl Sunnat wal Jamaat, the Maulana Ahmed Ludhiani, or the Allah Akbar Tariq Salah Sayyid. Yes, Saleh. Absolutely, indeed, and as thank you very much indeed for joining us from Islamabad and getting us the latest in terms of what's happening there. But the drama is not out because the government is still to be formed. It'll be interesting to see as to which are the allies that Imran Khan will in fact get. But the fact that the Pakistanis have rejected the extremist elements is something that one can in fact take heart in. And also there have been murmurs of election rigging that have been going round, but the Pakistan's election commission has now come forth and has rejected forthright the allegations of any sort of poll rigging, saying that the elections were indeed held in a free and a fair manner. Listen in. जो हमें रिसीव हुए हैं वो 82 फीसद हैं जो रिटर्निंग ऑफिसर्स फील्ड में नाउस कर चुके हैं वो 90 फीसद हैं ये 8 फीसद का फर्क या 5 फीसद का फर्क इसलिए है कि वो चौंके पहले नाउस कर देते हैं फिर उसके बाद हमें भेजते हैं तो ये 4-5 फीसद का फर्क है जब तक मैं वापस जाऊंगा ये 82 फीसद से बढ़ के हो सकता